based on historical data. Mm -hmm. But as pastor, preacher, and resident theologian, it is my job to shine a theological light on a human tragedy. Yeah. And COVID-19 has been a human tragedy. Yeah. With over 16 million cases and almost 300,000 deaths in this country alone, yeah. COVID-19 is a bona fide killer. Yeah. And with COVID being such a prolific killer, what that limits the ways in which I am afforded to look at the vaccine. Yes, history is bad. But just because the history is bad doesn't in and of itself make the vaccine bad. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. Yeah. Now, 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 now I, 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 I know Pfizer scientists are going to get the credit <coughs> here on Earth for the vaccine. But the truth of the matter is, the vaccine saves lives, and it's a gift from God. Yes. Yes. And on this third Sunday of Advent, yes. I want to take a look at the scripture that I read into your hearing and talk about the gift. Uh -huh. Not the vaccine, but the gift that saved then and is still saving now. Yes. That, that's what I want to talk about, the gift of Jesus. Yes. I, I, I want to talk about the gift because uh, it's a gift that will work for you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Long after you receive it. The vaccine may or may not be effective next year. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It may be like the flu vaccine where you have to go back and take it every year. Uh -huh. Or like the smallpox vaccine where you have to go back and get a booster. Uh -huh. But the gift with, that I'm talking about will bless you every time you to call his name. Yes. It will bless you without failing. The gift that I'm talking about keeps on giving and never stops being the devil and continues to bless you even beyond the grave. Yes. In our text, in our text, the Bible says, Mary treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. Church, time does not stop for anyone. Uh -huh. I don't care who you are, it does not stop for you. You can't stop time. You can't delay time. You can't slow time down. Time keeps moving. I don't care what you do. You can buy you can buy young folk clothes and you can get young folk after you can get young folk stuff and try to be like young folk, but time does not stop. It keeps moving and every time the clock ticks, you get a little bit older. You may forget to wind your watch. You may buy a clock that's got batteries in it, but time won't stop. It keeps ticking. Amen. So, 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 so for Mary, so for Mary, that first Christmas passed like every other day. But the gifts she received, the Bible says that she kept these things and pondered them in her heart. Now, 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 just, now, just what kind of gift did Mary receive? Number one, she received the gift of a kept promise. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Somebody say kept promise. Yes. God had promised the children of Israel that he was going to send them a Savior, uh -huh. a Messiah, but they had been dead. But, but for the last 400 years, uh, things had not worked out for the nation of Israel. They were once a, pro a, a profound, a, a, a prolific people, but, but now they have been broken and conquered by Rome. Roman citizens are everywhere. Roman soldiers are constantly in their streets. Uh, Roman taxes were unbearable for them. People within their own faith communion were at odds with each other. The zealots were at the Pharisees and the Pharisees were mad at the Sadducees. Everybody, everywhere was at every other's throat. Yes. Uh -huh. The pressure in the community was like that of a volcano that was about to erupt. So Mary had to be asking herself in the midst of all of this, where is God? Uh -huh. Where is this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? 
The voice of the prophets have, been, have not been heard for over 400 years. The one who promised to be a battle act in the time of trouble is nowhere to be found. The one who said, I will be your God and you will be my people is missing in action. And the one that had promised to be a mighty fortress in the time of trouble and had opened the Red Sea and down the walls of Jerusalem that Jericho was not seen, I know she had to be asking herself, where is God? Have you ever been in a situation so bad and so rough that you ask yourself, where is God? Yep. Well, that's the question that a lot of people have been asking during this pandemic. They want to know, where is God? Uh, Y'all sitting there, there looking at the screen funny because you can't believe I said it, but that's the truth of the matter. These are the times in which we live. Some people are so far behind on their bills because of the pandemic that they don't know if they'll ever catch up. Businesses of long standing have been closed. People are, where, are standing in food lines for hours trying to get just milk and bread. In some places, they're considering rationing health care. Oh, look at look, 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 loved ones get sick unto death, and it's too dangerous for you to be able to even go and be with them in their last hour. And if that ain't bad enough, when they pass on to be with the Lord, we can't even bring them back to the church. We have to preach the pure in the cemetery. And it's time, it's in times like these, y'all don't like this kind of preaching because this is true. It is in times like these, it's hard to see God. If I write about it, you all to type it in the chat because you're not yeah. telling the truth. Yeah. It's hard to see Him, it's hard to feel Him, and it's hard to believe that He's dead. Sometimes all you can do is throw your head back and holler, God, where are you? Everything is against me and everything is closing in on me. I can't see you. I can't hear you. I can't feel you. God, where?